Welcome back to Pray TV. So glad that you're here. Wow, we've been having a wonderful time with our friend and Wayne is here with us again. Thank you, Wayne, for joining us. And you just say hi and then Charlotte, greet the folk. Yes, it's the third day. It's the third day. What happens on the third day? Resurrection. <laughs> Resurrection happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're so glad that there is resurrection power and resurrection is in us because we are alive in Christ and we're very grateful for what he has done. You know, there has been a real beautiful anointing that we've been experiencing and we've been walking in and just sharing it together with Wayne and Charlotte and myself for the last three days and we are here expecting this anointing to remain and to increase as we pray together and as we look to the Lord together. We are looking here at another portion in Joel. This is chapter two and verse 28. And after this weeping between the porch or the portico as the NIV version says, and the altar, we have this promise that is in Joel 2:28, And it says, and afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. Wayne, I'm just going to ask you to make comment on this and what you are believing for as far as God pouring out his spirit is concerned. Yeah, it, it's a season for faith, not for fear or frustration. And I really believe that if we attach our hearts to this promise, God, the, co the covenant-keeping God who holds fast his word, that we can have a joy and endure the cross. Yes, we, we, we're feeling the cross of the price of weeping and mourning, but yet we are full of hope, full of confidence that the God of all truth, light, and love is about to pour out his spirit. We have to labor in hope, even as Jesus had to, see the joy set before him to endure his cross. So we also have to have a hope. And uh, 1,100 years from now, there's going to be no more cross. We're going to be in celebration eternally over this great season of sacrifice that we were privileged with to bear his cross, to do this journey of glorious reconciliation, to get for him a bride, and we will, be, we will be overwhelmed with gratitude in the fullness of the light of his glory and grace. Hallelujah. We are going to be. We have hope and joy. Amen. Amen. We are for sure. And let's just read this one more time as we do in our pattern. We usually read the scriptures twice and then we go into prayer. In Joel 2, 28, and afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. This is something that is the promise of God for each and every one of us in this season. Charlotte, I'm going to ask if you will begin our time of prayer, my dear. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this promise from the book of Joel. We know, Lord, that when Peter stood on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, he proclaimed this promise, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, God, had come upon your people. And Father, they became witnesses throughout the world, the then known world. And Lord, you have promised, Lord, that in the latter days, again, you will pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, Lord, Lord, we have yearned to see that day. And Father, we believe we are so close to seeing this God. Never before, God, have the people of the earth been so connected, God, in so many ways. And Father, we thank you that we are hearing of your outpouring of your spirit, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are just raining down your presence among your people, Lord, and we just welcome it, God, particularly, Lord, in the countries where people are giving their lives, Lord, for you. Father, we think of China, where so many of our Christian brothers and sisters, God, are laying down their lives, Lord, 
Father, they are counting it joy, Lord, because they know, God, for the joy that's set before them, just like you did, Jesus. You will endure, you endured the cross. And Father, we pray, God, that you will give us, Lord, that kind of passion and love for you, God, that we see the joy set before us, Lord, and these momentary afflictions that are just temporary, Lord, they just come into their proper perspective, Lord. We just praise you for this today. Amen. Amen and amen. Wayne, just continue our prayer time, brother. Yeah, so God, the, the, the crown that's before us of your beauty, that you will adorn us, Lord, with, that you have great rewards for those that persevere to the end. So, Lord, we just say, God, may we not grow weary again. Lord, may we, morning by morning, have the fullness of your counsel, Lord, but also the gamut of your emotions, Lord, that we do morning by morning. We need your mercy, but we also need the joy that strengthens us in the light of the hope of your great and precious promises, that we would be in love with this author and perfecter, their narrator, the voice of Jesus that's there for an ever-present help to guide us through this emotional turmoil season, God, where we need to keep plowing in tenderness, God, in tears, and so that we can reap with joy. And we just say, God, we desire fruitfulness along the journey, God. Anything that's holding us back, anything that's incomplete in our lives, any areas that are unfruitful, God, would you would you prune us, Lord God? Would you make us ready for the fruitfulness in the joy and the hope, Lord God, that in the beauty of your holiness, that you would be, be pleased to dwell in us, God, that Emmanuel, God within us, would be a real, powerful testimony that you've worked your beautiful work of reconciliation in us so that we might invite all men everywhere to this glorious reconciliation message that repentance is a is a privilege it is a freeing up or god of the bondages of of wrong perceptions of all that you're you are and who you desired us to know you in lord so we just say god may you today god restore our joy restore our hope god that we may morning by morning take the fullness of the cross and the resurrection power of jesus christ alive in us so that the effectual intercession of your heart would be poured out through our lips that we would open wide our mouths and you would give us as the very oracles of god that we would be so word saturated with our intercession that we would be overwhelmed lord god and that we would overwhelm god the atmosphere with your presence that you would be pleased to dance and before us with these songs of deliverance that you've given, Lord, these, these great and precious promises, not to keep us always in a distant relationship of hunger for hope, but you are the ever-present help in time of need, in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, Lord, and I just thank you that you are going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh, that our sons and daughters, they will prophesy that you will give old men dreams and visions and young men will be moving out in you and finding your direction and your guidance. Lord, be that anointing in every one of our lives as we just shake God. We shake off the dust from our feet, but Lord, we just shake under the anointing of your spirit. Lord, it is you, God, that are doing the mighty things. We praise you, God, because you are desirous of pouring out your spirit upon all flesh, that all men will be able to see your glory. There is no one who is able to stand in your presence to this day when you roll back the full power of your revelation, God. We all fall at your feet. Every man, every woman, every child is going to bow before you, is going to fall prostrate before you. And we thank you, God, that you are preparing us to be a part of this outpouring that is going to happen throughout the earth. This unquenchable, powerful manifestation of your glory in the earth. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wayne, I just love to hear you just open up your heart and just share why you brought this and what God's spoken to your spirit about this revival. I know that this outpouring that we've been praying for for years is coming, and I know that you have faith for it. So just open your heart and share with us about that. In my journey, I've, I've realized that we need to be word saturated so that he has content from which we can gaze upon his beauty and that he, he wants us to pull out of old mentalities of principled living but and trying to fit all these pieces together, the complexity and the, the vastness of all who he is. But into the joy of the journey of gazing upon the box, the author, uh, the beautiful picture of who he is in all his fullness of his dimensions of glory that we would just gaze upon him through his word so that we can not be finite left in our finiteness struggling to just even just see our little piece and understand what it is but that in the beauty of all that he is and coming to him as we are finite earthen vessels, that Hebrews passage, that has chosen us, that has set his affection on us. What is man that you're mindful of him? But you've set your gaze upon us the, as not just as a, 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 a friend, not just as a, a son restored, but as, as a bride. As a bride, he is making us into this bride. So the beauty of the wonder of his whole story, we need the wholeness of the beauty of all that he is so that we can persevere, press in, endure all things, hope all things, believe all things, press into his perfecting love, not, not flee the fire and self-preservation from the discipline that we need, but to joyously and come into a, a, a hunger for daily repentance so that we'll, we will not ever be burdened, but we'll stay in this constant place of wonder in the beauty of his light and glorious grace. Amen. Amen. God is doing this. Charlotte, I know that you've got some things that God's been speaking to your heart about, so I'd just like you to open your heart and just share a little bit in response to what Wayne has shared. Just the other day, uh, Brant and I were watching a video on the revival in the Hebrides, specifically the island of Lewis, and it just was so amazing to see how God just hovered over that whole island in such an incredible way. Nothing was orchestrated by man, but the Holy Spirit would wake people up in the middle of the night with a conviction of sin, and they would be out in the fields just crying, out in the roadways, go, moving towards the church to be in the presence of God. And we just long for this. We long for the genuine Spirit of God not something that is hyped or manipulated or controlled, but where the Spirit of God comes upon the hearts of the people, because the Holy Spirit will go wherever people are hungry. And this is what I've been crying out to the Lord, make us so hungry, Lord, for you, and you alone, that your Spirit will feel welcome to come and pour out of your life. And I really believe this whole time right now with corona and all the disruption and even the violence that's going on it is really to wake up the church to come to a place where we return to our first loved our first love and we really cry out to God there has been such a dearth of the word of God Wayne you're absolutely right I was saying to Brant yesterday our young generation here in America, they really haven't even heard the Word of God. Right. They have no foundation, at least the, when the Hebrides revival and the Welsh revival, people had been exposed to the Word of God. And the Word of God was in their spirits and was quickened by the Spirit of God. And so I just feel too that's part of our prayer is that there would be once again just the unrestrained voice of the Word of God and the hearing of the Word of God in our nation. And I'm going to ask you, Wayne, if you would just pray one more time for this outpouring, that God's power will be released in all of the earth, 
We are conduits of it and we must enter into it, but at the end of the day, it's a God thing and He alone can accomplish this. So you just lead us in prayer and we'll kind of put a wrap on it at the end of this. Thank you, brother. Yeah, so God, we are so confident that the good work you've begun in us, you're faithful to complete it. And so we surrender, God, into this glorious story. And we do, God, morning by morning. We want to hear your voice uh, speak into the atmosphere, not only of our own hearing, God, but into the atmosphere of our homes, into the atmosphere of even our neighbors, God, that we would be freshly stirred with such a sweetness of truth, light, and love, God, that, that uh, enables us to hear their love language and shed abroad uh, this invitation, God, that with winsome joy and peace and confidence that this these present afflictions are nothing in comparison to the, to the joy of knowing you, God. And so we just, we do, we, we, we expect you, God, to do not only it with strangers, Lord, but we expect it even in our own families, Lord God, that the impact of your promise of Joel 2, uh, 28 that it is going to happen in our reality of our lives because we pressed in we've believed and come to agreement with your heart as you revealed it in scripture we've fallen in love with your testimony we've fallen in love with the blood of the lamb we've fallen in love lord god with with your desire to reach all men everywhere and you are going to perfect us and make us winsome and effective in this generation Lord, in this season, God, and so we're, we're not waiting for the crowd. We're, we're giving our yes today, Lord, to go out and invite all men everywhere into this glorious adventure of Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter. Amen. And friends, we just ask you to press into the Lord, however you do it. And what I'm going to specifically pray for today is that as you press into God, you listen for His voice, you gain that affirmation in your soul of what is He calling you to do today, and then you act on what God speaks into your spirit, man, today, and go and do what He tells you to do. There is such importance to praying, but it's praying and it's obeying and it's walking it into place and it's declaring and all of these things are a part of what God is calling us to do and to be in this hour. So may God bless you. Thank you, Wayne, for being here with us these past three days. It's just been a pleasure to be able to have these programs with you. My heart is ignited by what God's doing in and through you. We pray for this wonderful city in Washington, D.C. And we're in Boston, but we're praying for D.C. And we're praying that God will work in all of the earth by the might and the power of his outpouring. God bless you each and every one, and we'll see you soon. God bless you.